Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Stanley. It's another beautiful day here in the Batangas province. Nice and sunny. Seems like the rainy season might be kind of winding itself down and mornings are getting a little bit cooler, which is nice. We just got another pretty large electric bill for us and that's what we're going to talk about today is our monthly expenses for the month of June. We had a few unforeseen expenses pop up that are a little out of the ordinary. We weren't really planning on doing another monthly expense video, but we get so many comments and questions related to the issue that we thought we'd go ahead and do another monthly expense report, especially since we ended up having some unforeseen expenses this month. And that's one thing we want to help people be aware of is that always be ready for the unforeseen. So anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today. And We'll see you on the other side. Thanks for sticking around, everybody. And today we're going to talk about our expense report for the month of June. Originally, we had not planned on making another expense report video, but we get so many comments and questions related to the topic that we decided to go ahead and continue these for a few more months so that people can get an idea of how much your day-to-day, month-to-month expenses can change here in the Philippines, and also how to prepare for some unforeseen costs that might pop up from time to time, which has happened for us, and just to make sure that you're prepared for that eventuality because it will happen to everyone. And just make sure you have enough money set back to take care of things as they come up so you don't have to operate at a hardship. Okay, So just bear with me as I take a look at my notes as we go along so I get the figures correctly and, and we'll go ahead and begin. Our exchange rate for today here in the Philippines is one U.S. dollar will get you 55.40 pesos. Pretty good exchange rate. It's been fairly constant for the last several months above 55, and it's been above 56 several times, which is very, very good news for me and all the expats living in the Philippines. It, it makes our money go a little bit farther when we have that good exchange rate. Okay. So our housing, it's a fixed cost. It's at 30,000 pesos per month. And I love doing the video because I know that each time I do it, I'm one month closer to ownership of the home here for Jen. And when that happens, we'll no longer have a housing payment. And we will contribute that money into our travel fund and do a little bit more extravagant trips than, than our, our day trips that we've been doing. As you can tell, we love to get out and travel. It, the Philippines is a beautiful place, and I plan on seeing just as much of it as I possibly can, okay? The month of June was another really hot month. It was rainy as well. The rainy season seems to be tapering off just a little bit here, and uh, it's a little cooler in the mornings, which is good news, because probably by the end of this month, the beginning of next month, we'll be able to not use our air conditioner every day. For June, we did have to use it every day. A couple hours in the afternoon, a couple hours at night before we went to sleep, and we set it on the timer and it shuts off. And our electric bill for this month was 3,927 pesos, or $70.88. We expect that to go down. Our cost during the months that are not so hot it generally averages around 2,500 pesos, which is a little less than $50 a month. And that's something that I'm, I'm very happy with. I, I know I've had some comments of people that say they have comparable bills in the USA, but I know that where I lived in Missouri, the duplex I lived in, it was larger than my house here. And, of course, the heating and the air conditioning and everything was electric. But my electric bill was in excess of $200 almost every month and would get close to $300 in the winter. That's a, that's a lot of money, at least for me. So, 
our internet bill went down by 400 pesos this last month. And that's because StreamTech sent out a survey, an online survey, and the first 100 people to answer and return the survey got 400 pesos off on their bill. And so I was in the first 100 to return the survey. So our internet cost this month was 2,762 pesos or $49.86. We only have two months left on our contract, and as soon as that time is expired, we're going to be shifting over to Globe Internet, and we live right next to a Globe cell phone tower. We get great reception here, and I've already bought a router, a Globe router, that was very inexpensive. It was less than 1,000 pesos, and I've tested the connection, and on a good day, I can get 10 K speeds more on the globe box than I can on my fiber stream to KBPS, I think is what it is, or MBPS. Yeah, our speeds are normally around 30 on the stream tech, although that's on a good day. The average is usually down around 12. But I've got up to 40 on the, the globe box, and it's prepaid. And you can get unlimited for an entire month for 1,400 pesos. So we're going to give that a try for a while. And hopefully in the future, PLDT will key in some fiber in, in plantation here, and, and we'll be able to get the good Internet that they have up in downtown Lipa. Our water bill went up slightly this month, up to 312 pesos. I attribute that to inflation. It's up from 282 pesos. So our bill this month, it's $5.63. Our drinking water, which stays fairly consistent throughout the year, was 180 pesos this month, or $3.24. Our LP gas, we didn't have to buy a gas bottle this month, but we budget 300 pesos per month because almost like clockwork, every three months we have to replace the bottle, and it costs $900 currently for the bottle, so 300 per month budgeted. Gas for the scooter, 740 pesos, or $13.36, and that's up a little bit for us than our average month because we took a few more trips this month and drove a little bit farther in distance to reach some of the destinations for leisure, and we had a good time. It was well worth it. And you know, the scooter gets really good gas mileage, and gas has been very reasonably priced the last few months here in the Philippines, down below 60 pesos per liter, which is pretty decent. Our food bill stays pretty consistent, for, and for June we were 18,500 pesos, or $333.94. Our restaurant bill is up from where it normally is because of those extra trips that we took. And we also ate out just a little bit more than normal this last month. And our restaurant bills totaled 2,831 pesos or $51.10. As you can see from our videos, Jen and I normally eat local cuisine and it's very reasonably priced. We don't search out western style food because Whenever you do that, you're going to pay Western-style prices for your food. Every once in a while, you kind of get a hankering for some Kentucky Fried Chicken or a Big Mac, and you go out and, and pay the money and get that. But the majority of the time, we stick to the, the local cuisine, which I'm perfectly fine with that. We have a, our miscellaneous cost this month was 2,000 pesos, or $36.10. And that includes, uh, we had an overnight stay over in La Ia, which was 1,400 pesos. And then that includes like our eco fees that we had to pay, any parking that we pay on trips and when we go to the malls. Because we always have to pay 20 pesos when we park at the SM Mall and at the Robinson Mall and a few other places downtown. It's, it's very cheap, 20 pesos is... It's less than 50 cents to park, and there's no time limit. For Jen's uh, Social Security, 
650 pesos for the month or $11.73 and for her Phil Health 350 pesos or $6.32 now we get to some of our unexpected costs that we normally don't pay each and every month and we had a flat tire on our scooter the day after we got back from La Ia, we packed up and we were headed out to the SM to go and buy some groceries and my, I heard a pop about 50 yards down the road from the house and a whistling sound as the air came out of the tire. And so we just turned around and brought it back home and ended up calling a local tire place, which there's hundreds of them in Lipa City. And, and any town you ever go to, you're going to see these places. They're vulcanizing shops. Some of them sell scooters as well. But they all sell parts and they service scooters and they all have a pretty good selection of tires. And we went to one that's right up the road from us in a small town, which is called Mabini, which is a popular name here in the Philippines, in the barangay of Mabini. And it's only a couple of kilometers from here. It's, Mabini is where we also go to church as well. But anyway, we went up and the guy came to our house. He took the tire off the scooter, took it back with him to the shop, replaced it, put the tire on the wheel, brought it back to the house and put it back on the scooter, and then let us go out and test drive it before he left. And the total price for the tire, the service visit, and the labor was 2,300 pesos or $41.52, which is a very reasonable price for that kind of a, a job to be done. I mean, you got to figure, how much is that? $41.52 to get a tire replaced at my house. The guy came and did it here. So, But then again, all service-related type expenditures that you have in labor costs here in the Philippines, are generally, generally they're relatively inexpensive compared to what we're used to back in the Western societies. We also invested in uh, some YouTube video equipment this month. Now we didn't buy any state-of-the-art equipment because we're not attempting to be professional but we do want to make the best quality videos that we can. And so we, we bought two 4K cameras and they're, they're lower end 4K cameras, as I'm sure you can probably tell. But we, we're doing the best we can. And the price of those from Amazon was 11,000 pesos, which we paid this month in June, or $198.56. And that included the customs and import fees. And the shipping from Amazon for those products were free because we were above the minimum threshold, which was. $79 when I ordered the camera. So if any purchase that we had made above 79 would incur the free shipping from Amazon. And then we also had homeowner association fees, which I have neglected to put in the last few months, it, totally by accident, and I apologize for that. It's, we only pay it every four months, which is why I forgot about it. And we pay 2000 every four months which averages out to it's 500 pesos per month for our homeowners fees and it's well worth the nine dollars and three cents that that it costs us each month that includes our trash pickup twice a week or i'm sorry three times a week monday wednesday and friday our trash is picked up in our grove here it includes our security guards out at the gate who also patrol the property 24/7 on motorcycles, and that's that's pretty you know that's I think that's fairly reasonable for those types of amenities, and it also includes includes uh, landscaping and and cutting the grass on your property as well. They they come by and do that once a month as well. I mean the grass gets pretty long in that month, and if if you wanted to trim it down yourself, you could, but I just wait until the end of the month and. Those guys come through here regular as clockwork, and they they cut the grass down for us, and it looks great. So that brings us to our total for the month, which was 
76,352 pesos or $1,378.69 which to me is still very reasonable for a month where we bought cameras and where we had to buy a tire for our scooter so that 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 kind of is in line with our normal cost which is between a thousand and eleven hundred dollars every month and, and we're going to continue to show you that that's what our actual cost is every month and you have to realize that that's including a thirty thousand peso per month house payment which whenever that goes away our expenses will go way down they'll drop down by over five hundred dollars a month and we're going to use that for travel and we've also we haven't decided yet but we might just uh once the house is paid off we might rent it to another expat or another filipino couple and go and take up a temporary residence in another part of the philippines like i've always had my heart kind of set on living in the eastern visayas region on negros island or Bahal. so we might give that a shot for a while then we'll always have the house here to fall back on and we can find some pretty cheap rents over in the Visayas region as well but of course that's just wishful thinking and that's in the future and, and we'll think about it and visit those places and hopefully our channel will remain viable and, and we keep getting some pretty decent viewership and as long as we do that we'll continue to make these videos and I know next summer we're planning on making some longer trips over to the island of Bahal and the island of Negros and possibly over to Palau as well. And you guys will really appreciate how beautiful those places are and we're going to video those things and continue to practice and try to get better at, at the quality of our videos. And as always, we totally appreciate you guys so very, very much. Hope you'll stick around and share these videos with others that you think might help and benefit from it. And anyway, we'll see you at the next video. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay happy. And now you can see how it breaks down individually, looking at it on like a spreadsheet type setup. Just a little couple of slides that I made up. But anyway, I mean, that's it for our June budget. The only, let me think, did I leave anything out? The only thing I left out was our cell phones that people would probably ask about, but we didn't have to add any load to our phones this month. So that's, that's pretty much it. As always, guys, we super duper appreciate you guys hanging around and watching our videos and sticking with us. And hopefully if our channel stays viable and, and, you know, we keep enough interest in viewership, then we'll have a lot more video to share in the future whenever we go and take some trips over to the islands of Bohol and Negros and possibly think about maybe even living over in the Visayas region sometime in the future after we finish paying off this house. We might just end up renting it to maybe another expat or or another filipino couple and then taking us up a rental place over in the visayas for a while and you know just having that property gives us the freedom to do that but anyway guys if you as always if you have any questions just drop them below any comments we appreciate it so very much there's been so many nice warm comments and, and we're very appreciative of that and very few negative there have been a couple and i, I knew getting into this youtube video thing that you're always going to find some haters out there and people that just want to try to tear you down no matter what you do and i just ignore that and and move on down the road and i do this for you guys that appreciate it and believe it or not i appreciate you way more than you could ever imagine it, it really really makes us feel good to know that people are watching our videos and and maybe getting some good out of it but anyway, until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you at the next video. Take care.